Hello everyone, it's Alex here. Um, this video is uh, to give everyone an introduction really to the um, the new V5 Luminosity Mars panel that Tony's um, brought out. Um, it's it, it's not possible for me to go into great detail on all the different buttons and indeed that's covered very very well by Sean Bagshaw in his own video series. Really this is for people who are interested in luminosity masking and don't have them or, or really um, want to get a bit more of a, an insight in, into how it sits within Photoshop and how it sits within the workflow of a photographer before they would go ahead and um, consider buying. Uh, here is the V5 panel. Um, just to give you some context, uh, here is the old V4 panel. So we had lots and lots of words, and lots and lots of colours and buttons, and then we had all this sort of uh, stuff over here for the masking and the selections. And uh, that's all been changed now into a, what looks like perhaps a more even more complicated um, setup, but it's really not. What Tony's done with the V5 panel is make everything modular so we can have things open that we want to have open and things that we don't we, we don't need to see. And this is the way I prefer to have mine set up. You could have yours done a different way, but I have the control panel at the top, and that. Um, brings in some of the functionality of the normal uh, Photoshop control panel. Then I've got the layer mask and rapid mask, which is for the luminosity mask selections. And then down here you've got the actions, and these are Tony's kind of pre-bundled action sets, um, except for these six buttons here. These are customizable with your own actions, which are, have got my ones in them now. And what's really neat is you can even rename them so that that one there, 16 to 8, for example, is a conversion of a 16-bit file to an 8-bit file. Uh, it's not just number one, which um, which in the old panel I, I tended to forget what number one did, or number three, or four, five, whatever. Um, so up here, uh, what Tony's done then, in essence, is uh, bring in all the functionality that the photographer typically uses in Photoshop into a single um, place. And then um, he's also brought uh, in the, the layer masking um, functionality into these, these um, tabs here. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more accessible. So, for example, if you wanted to have a black paintbrush, um, you click on that and your paintbrush is selected with black paint, and conversely, the, the white would do that. Um, here, these ones here are the blending modes. So these are nice, quick, and accessible. There's a, a quick button here for flattening. Um, again, that's a sort of two-step process. You click this, and then you'd scroll down and have to click again. But it's all here, up here, nice and visible. Here are the, um, the the adjustments, which are all contained normally down here. Um, now it's a bit easier because they're very visual and um, you quickly learn which ones you need, which ones are what. Um, and you know, there's, there's, there's certain things that, I mean, this is very useful. This When you hover over, you get a nice little um, box that, that tells you what it is. Um, this one, for example, it says merge merges visible layers into a pixel layer. Now, Historically, that was Command Alt Shift Four, I think, or um, R. Anyway, it was it was four. I can't even remember. There we go. So there was four buttons that you had to click and find and remember. Whereas now it's just one click of a button, and that that merges all your layers into a new pixel layer on top. So it it, it does save time. You know, if if I'd have forgotten those four tabs, I'd have to go on Google, find out what they were, and then go back in and do it. It's all a bit um, a bit of a drag uh, on time. Then down here we've got the the the, the, uh, the, the selections and um, these have changed a little bit, but but I think they're they're, they're better. Um, here we can choose all our lights and uh, what's really neat about um, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 new way that, that, that it's been done is that um, if you want to see a picture uh, of of the mask itself in place, then uh, it's very very easy. So for example, if we choose a curve. And we wanted to make a selection, I don't know, of the sun. And we press number one. It's going to show us um, on the mask here what we've got in place. Very nice. And progressively more restrictive. Same for the levels. And if we wanted to do a um, see that on screen, then the rapid mask module is great because the rapid mask will show us without having to do the old clicking step. So we can go through all our um, selections and see the mask on the file itself and go, yep, that's the one we want. We really just want to, uh, I don't know, do something to the sun. So that's the closest we can get. Uh, if, we, if we ignore infinitizing, where we can 
uh, manually adjust the selection <coughs> and then we can do whatever it is we want to do so um, that's selection in place we can do whatever it is we're doing add, add a significant amount of contrast in this instance without the mask in place uh, it's very very aggressive with the mask in place a lot, a lot more subtle uh, so the wrapper mask is, is very useful um, for that purpose, for identifying um, luminosity masking um, areas of an image that, or areas that we want to make a selection of through a luminosity mask. And uh, the layer mask is then very useful for more general processing. So um, let's take that away, for example. Say we wanted to do um, an adjustment to, uh, I don't know, uh, the contrast. So we would get uh, a curve because that's what I use for making my contrast adjustments. And then I put a mid-tones uh, one selection in place, and that's already then loaded into the mask. There's no command clicking on the channels panel as there was before. It just comes straight in, and we can then make our adjustment and then quickly toggle it to see if we're happy. Yep, great. Move on to the next job or the next layer adjustment. So that's really how these two um, work as a very sort of simple overview. Um, and then... Um, if you go and look at Sean's videos, you'll get a much deeper insight into how, what, what these um, buttons will do, and, and they are very, very useful. Um, and down here, what I think is, is important that's new is the frequency separation. This allows us to do some um, very clever um, uh, cloning out, if you like, of, of things like flare, uh, which is covered um, in, in Sean's videos. You've got texture and colour blur, so you can paint texture or, or, or make colour selections. To, um, to remove flare, very, very good. The Orton effect is a lovely adjustment, um, uh, a lovely uh, action to run. That, that's, that's a nice soft diffused look to an image. And then down here, the web sharpening. So once we've finished our pictures, we typically save them in high res and low res, high res being for our prints, and then low res being for social media or websites. And um, there's a very, very smart uh, web sharpening uh, action that Tony's provided included with the bundle so we just choose whatever we want so if we want this to be 640 pixels and we click fit it opens a new file so there's the original high res there's the low res there it is nice and resized and we can adjust the opacity if we want to um, we can have it wherever we like it starts at 50 that's fine and then there's a layer stack so that needs to be flattened so we'll come up here flatten it and then we can just save that as a low res jpeg for uh, emailing on websites Okay, so uh, I won't go any further into it, um, but hopefully that's given you a, a rough overview of, of the um, functionality on offer, and uh, I, I thoroughly recommend it. I, 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 you can see from my, my, my screen set up that it's, it's completely embedded into my Photoshop workflow, and uh, I find it absolutely indispensable for the uh, photography post-production that I do. Okay, I'll see you next time, and thanks for listening.